Hello, I am Pete, also known as Risk for Rewards. I'm currently at around 7,000 followers on Twitter. Um, if you don't already subscribe on YouTube, I probably would because a lot of my content is going to be coming out on YouTube first just because it's quicker because I can get everything out straight away then I can type it up and uh, write everything later on. Um, so this is where early price will be throughout the whole week. It is a busy week. We go Tuesday all the way through to Saturday and it's bumper to bumper group ones each day. Um, predominantly, I'm going to be aiming at the group ones, um, but we will have some bets and handicaps all the way through. Um, just a quick one is just remember this is not Cheltenham. Some of these horses are going to boil over. Uh, some horses, especially on this first day, straight off the bat, they ran on the day on the Wednesday where it was an absolute bog at Cheltenham. So if they underperform, they underperform. All you can do is follow the ratings, follow the form, follow what you know, go with your instinct, go and what the trainers already set out to do in the previous times, and uh, hope you get it right. So without wasting any time, straight into it. First up, we've got the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Um, won last year by Willie Mullins. Um, no surprise there, Willie Mullins sat there with a favourite. Um, he's got the first two in the market with Dino Blue and Pice uh, and Grangey, um, both of which ran only nine days ago. Uh, they had a bit of a tussle. Uh, Dino Blue came out on top, finishing fourth um, in behind the other stablemate, Brandy Love. I'd imagine she's not there because of the fact she booked her ticket because she won there. The other two have just been rolled and thrown back in here. They have very different races. Dino Blue, they were trying to test her out, put her out the back, slowly brought her into the race, removed her keenness, and she ran on, staying on well. Um, whereas Grandi was the opposite. Uh, Willie Mullins said she raced quite keen and free um, and didn't really travel, but you looked at maybe two furlongs out and she was still hard on the bridle whilst the others were beginning to be nudged on. Um, she stayed on into sixth, but she didn't really do a lot from there. Um, but my preference is the fact that I think possibly maybe they didn't push her too hard in the fact that dropping her back in trip here to go for this event. Um, Party Central was awesome for us at the Dublin Racing Festival, won really well. Not really a, a bit of a no-show when finishing seventh at Cheltenham um, because Dino Blue travelled so keen there as the favourite and Party Central, it took till almost the last hurdle for Party Central to get past her and Dino Blue ran no race that day. So I'm not saying the jury's out on her. Party Central could still win, especially obviously she comes here fresh. So she has skipped um, uh, the previous engagement nine days ago and if the other two underperform but there's not a lot in it in ratings so I'm keen to go with uh, I'm going to go with Grangey just because I thought that maybe she's been laid out a little bit better for this uh, if you want to cover on Dino Blue I wouldn't put anyone off um, but as as we know it's the mayor so you never know how they're going to perform champion novice I'll keep it short I think this is a bit of a plan so they're riding Sergio Hard against Dysart Dynamo in order to find out where they're at with their novices if Sergio Hard uh, cannot beat Dysart Dynamo, then it's very hard to envisage Sergio Hard going on a champion hurdle campaign. So you'd be expecting him to win this and win this well if you want any sort of hope of uh, putting it up to Constitution Hill next year. The way Constitution Hill, I know Dysart fell, so you can't say anything's definite, but the way he was going to put it up to Dysart Dynamo, you think there was going to be at least probably 10 lengths between them at the line. So Sergio Hard, you'd be expecting him to win. I mean, he doesn't have to win by 10 lengths, but he, he should be beating, beating Dysart Dynamo. Therefore, if you can get bets on Sergio Hart to win tomorrow and win the champion hurdle, they kind of go hand in hand. Because if he doesn't win tomorrow, then I can't really see how he wins the champion hurdle. Um, and he might end up going chasing. Dysart Dynamo, I'd imagine, will definitely be going chasing because he's just so keen. He needs to respect his um, hurdles or his fences. So he might go to the arc. Or, um, I'm not saying Sergio Hart will definitely beat Dysart Dynamo. But you look at the form, look at the ratings, look at what they've achieved. Dysart Dynamo was very impressive in this last year. I laid him. And he went to like about five or six to one in running. I thought this was the easiest money ever, but he just did not stop. And since then, obviously, I've realised that that's the way he runs. Um, whereas Sergio Hard's the complete opposite. But I can imagine him sitting on Dysart Dynamo's tail. And if Dysart's fast enough, then he'll just burn him off. But the chances are Sergio Hard will just take that lead um, and then go away from him. The only one negative with Sergio Hard is the fact that obviously he raced on the day where it was bottomless at Cheltenham, but Three Stripe Life uh, ran behind him that day and has come out and won a Group 1 since uh, entry on the bridle. So if he can recover, I think Sergio Hard won three races last year um, and then he underperformed here, getting beat by stablemate Kill Crook. Um, this, this same position this year, he's won three again, he's unbeaten over hurdles. Difference is he hasn't had a stable switch. So I'm putting that down to the stable switch last year. 
Um, I think if he wants to be a champion hurdle contender, he's got to beat him here. So all eyes on the champion hurdle market, just if you want to get the cover in, if you think he could be better than Constitution Hill. Willie Mullins likes one, and it looks like he could be one, and so could Vorban. So uh, onto the handicap, I'm going to keep these shorter. Um, so handicap hurdle, I, I like far root in this, um, mainly because Willie Mullins has got a great record in all the races, but he's got a good record in handicaps here. Um, but running up to Cheltenham, I thought it looked a bit like a gallop in Deschamps. Clearly isn't looking at the form or anything anywhere near that, but it was just the way he was campaigned aggressively. He was third in the champion novice hurdle behind Third Stripe Life, Group 1 winner now, and Mighty Potter. He then went to the Dublin Racing Festival. He's campaigned aggressively again, and he finished fifth behind Sir Gerhard, Three Stripe Life, and Colonel Mustard, who also obviously has ran well in both handicaps at Cheltenham and uh, in the group race at Aintree. Um, he was ninth in the county, and um, but he was sent off in a handicap nine days ago again, um, where he was ten to three favourite. He raced quite free that day, but he was given an even time, easy time out in the background. So I'm hoping very similar to Grandji. I mean, I could have this completely around the wrong way, but at fifteen to two in a wild open handicap, there's a lot of love for Adler, but I'm happy to take a swing at, that Faru is a bit better than his current mark, and he could put it in on today. Um, as we know, handicaps, they're not your stronger bets of the day. So just a speculative, but I'm happy. Uh, champion chase. This is a, as coin toss as you get. The thing is, the negatives are all there for Shaka Buswa. Yeah, he doesn't perform in England, but I'm not saying he's performing brilliantly over in Ireland. That Dublin Race Festival fell apart as soon as Greenerton didn't travel. Like That was not a good field that he beat. I know he did it well. And his numbers are good. And this race is his race. He's got good ground, small field. He's going to blast off from the front. Everything is in his favour. However, Enig Amin has done everything asked of him as well. And obviously the only time that he's been beaten is by Shishkin in an absolute grueler. And he's bounced back from that. And he won again on the bottomless ground at Cheltenham in the champion chase. So if he underperforms, if there's any chink in his armour, Shaka Boussoua is going to expose that. And because of that soft ground, he could well expose that. However... Enigam means put up all the. He's, he's got. I know he's uh, Shakun's higher rated, but Enigam means got better numbers than him. He's got better times. He's consistent, and he's only obviously he's only been beaten by Shishkin. So if you spun this round the other way, and if it was say Enigam mean, um, had beaten Shishkin, and then he skipped the champion chase or whatever, you'd have to think if Enigam mean was trained for any other stable. Say this was Nicky Henderson sending Enigam mean over. You think this horse would be shorter than the potential at the moment is drifting so i think it could be evens tomorrow so and i just and i just think when you're weighing it i know that enigamine unless cheltenham's took a lot out of him he should run his race and he was electric here like i know everyone's saying shakan's very good but he was electric here last year as well and there was only they ran on different days different fields different types and there was only a second between them in the timings so and Enigamin was faultless as well. So there, there isn't going to be a lot between them. I know a lot will say we'll go with the bigger price, but Shakun, I could easily see after three fences, he's not running his race. You've you've got no idea. Whereas Enigamin, the only way I can see him not running his race is if he's had too much from Cheltenham. Because he's only had three runs this season. So he remains the bet for me. He's currently four to five and he could possibly be evens. So I know they're the two favourites of the two clashes. But you go with what you expect to what you expect to win. I'm not going to stand there and tell you to back something and then back something differently myself. Not touching the bumper. Um, novice chase. Uh, Bob Arlinger. I've been on him all the way through all his starts, but I was pretty horrified watching. I know he beat Ga uh, Galloping Deschamps after he fell, but there's just something about him like coming to the line. He just didn't look. If he runs the race before when he was back in Ireland, he runs that race of beating Capadano. I think he'd win this. And that's providing he stays three miles. However, I'd, I'm not convinced there's something going on. Like Henry, it sounded like Henry was going to be out for the season. Um, he had his muscle injuries and all these sort of things. But And then suddenly now he's coming back around and doing a big loop and that he's he's good to go and he's stepping up to three miles. So I'm really not sure on Bob Allen here. He could go off odds on, he could go off six to four. And he could be the best six to four shot. He could be the worst odds on shot. It would not surprise me. He's got to stay the three miles and he's got to get the job done. So I'm happy just to pass him over. This is a race which I really don't. I wouldn't be laying him. I wouldn't be backing him. So I'm just going to take a swing at Fury Road at 15 to two. Um, just a, a quick look at his form. Um, he's raced twice at three miles. Um, he is a group one winner, beating uh, Run Wild Fred, Vanillier and the national horse Max Flamingo. Um, and obviously recently... He finished second when given quite an easy ride when well beaten by a hoy senor um, at Aintree.
So if he's come on for that run, he's a bit in and out, um, but he has got a good group one form at three miles. So and in a, in a race where it's wide open, there might be some bookmakers that go three places. Capadano has raced every race, like he's danced every dance. I think he's done so much racing this year and he was part of the bottomless ground and he, like, he just, I just couldn't have him on my mind personally. Um, so whilst it's Bob Allen in his race to lose, um, I'm happy to take a swing at Fury Road. Um, and that, that will be it for uh, day one. Ten minutes, job done. Um, I'll be back again uh, tomorrow and I'll be doing day two and day three um, and I'll stay out on top of the other side so we can get all the early prices. I'm still waiting for them to price up day two. But good luck on whatever you're backing.